I did a live stream the other day and I was trying to answer everybody's questions as they came in, but they were coming in fast. And when I looked at the chat afterwards, I realized I had missed a ton of really great questions from new keepers. So I'm gonna answer those questions today. And I'm wearing a sweater because it is chilly outside. Why are we going outside? Uh, I feel like it, I guess. Do I need a reason? Let's go outside. Welcome to Outside the Green Room. I'm Bob Bledsoe. We're gonna do this sort of as an experiment and see if the sound and lighting and such like that works. I actually wanna start doing these live streams outside. Some of the questions that I got in the live stream the other day were really good ones and I read through them after the camera was off and I thought, man, I wish I had seen these. So here we go. Say hello to my brother Kent behind the camera. Hurry up, it's freezing out here. Well, do you wanna go back inside where the snakes are? No. Great, first question I missed. We're gonna hear airplanes, you guys. That's just gonna be a thing on this video, so sorry about that. How did you get confidence to hold him when he was striking all the time? Aaron is talking about Captain Farrell. I was mentioning how he was a really nervous snake and he was constantly striking at the tub and, and such like that. The confidence is that I just wasn't concerned about being bit, and that's not because I'm a super brave, manly man. It's just that baby pythons don't cause any damage when they bite really. I mean, they'll cause a little bit of blood because their teeth are very sharp, but I've mentioned this in videos before, they are so small that they don't even pass through the epidermis of your skin. They don't go further than the first layer. So there will be some blood, you'll look, you'll go, I think I just got bit, I didn't feel anything, and you'll look and there'll be a little bit of blood and you rinse it off and then that's it. Versus on Thanksgiving, I don't know, a month ago, I was bit just minorly by a dog in my hand, a dog bit me. And that hurt all day and into the next day. And I still have a little mark from a month later. That's a dog bite. Snake bite is nothing. So uh, wasn't concerned about being bit for one thing. Also, whenever you're handling a new snake, especially a baby, you wanna just go in confidently, quickly, you know, not, not super quick movements, but just open their enclosure, reach in, pick them up from behind. Once they're up and in your hand, they're, they're gonna be fine. For Captain Farrell, he, the other thing that I did, other than handling him occasionally, was just giving him time where his tub was open and I was standing there and he could come out and sort of move around on my hand if he wanted to. He started off the first few days just kind of checking it out. He would pop his little nose out and then he'd go back in and, and go hide. And then eventually he would come out onto my hand and that's what he does now. It didn't take him very long, it might take other snakes longer. Just have confidence. Even if you're scared to get bit, what you're scared of is getting startled. Next question. Where's Kent? I'm right here, freezing my butt off. You need to make it to more live streams, Kent. You have fans. That's one person. Next question. Debbie asks, will Kent ever do a live stream? That's two. Awesome. We'll get Kent back on live streams. Oh, you know what? I also forgot to mention in the live stream that Green Room Pythons now has its own physical address. I've had people ask me recently what the address is to mail stuff. And rather than giving out my home address, uh, I got a mailbox down the street. So that address is in the description now. How do you start a reptile collection? It's a good question. Most people just start with one and that's how I would advise it. And I also wouldn't advise going at it with the idea that you're going to have a reptile collection because that takes a lot of time and energy to properly care for a group of animals. So, you know, I think usually when it happens, it happens organically and somebody gets something, let's say they get a tegu. They go, I think I want a tegu. So they get a massive enclosure and they figure out how to take care of a tegu. And once they have that handled, they might go, oh, I think now I want a snake or maybe I want a green tree monitor or another tegu. I don't know why you would need two tegus, but the point is they do it uh, sort of organically. And then eventually they end up with a whole group of animals, but they also end up, you know, each time they get a new animal, that's more space in their home, that's more time out of their life, out of their day, that's um, potentially a whole different care regime, depending on if you're getting different species or not. I wouldn't start off with a reptile collection. I would start off with one and then just build as, as you feel like you can manage it, you know? And I don't think a group of animals is the best thing for most people anyway. It's like having one cat versus a group of cats, right? You don't need a group of cats. Or I don't know, maybe you do. Did you use ASF juice from Reptilinks? Yes, I did. Hey everybody, Future Bob here. ASF juice is the juice from an African soft fur, which is a rodent that ball pythons in the wild really like to eat. And if you drip this stuff on the rodent that you're trying to feed your snake, it makes them more likely to eat. 
supposedly. I'm sure it works on some snakes. It hasn't worked. I actually, I don't think I've mentioned this in a video before, but uh, when I ordered my Reptilanx, which I love, I also ordered ASF juice because I might as well, since they're shipping me an expensive shipment anyway, might as well add something to it. And I thought, you know, I'll try it on some of my less enthusiastic eaters and it hasn't worked on anybody. I might try that ASF juice again. I, I'm, not, I'm not ruling it out totally. It just hasn't worked on any of my snakes at this point. Frank is asking how much yawning is too much. And that's a good question because pythons are sleepy buggers, right? And a lot of times we hear that a snake that's yawning excessively potentially has a respiratory infection. There's a difference though. If you bring your snake out and you see him yawn a couple times in 15 minutes, half an hour, something like that, that's no big deal. That's just a sleepy snake. But the yawning that happens back to back or if they're hanging their mouth open also in between yawns, that's when it's potentially a problem. It's like, it's like that plane has a muffler attachment to make it louder. Like it's trying to be cooler than the other planes. When the snake is hanging their mouth open like that, one thing that you can do is just look into the snake's mouth and you can see if there's excessive saliva. If you see bubbles uh, in, in their mouth, that's a problem. Also, if the back of their throat is dark pink, uh, that's potentially a problem and you should see a vet. Which of your snakes don't have hides and why? It's a good question. I was mentioning in the live stream that most of my snakes have two hides and I think I probably said that a couple of them don't have hides at all. Uh, the snakes that don't have hides are Lydia Dietz, for one thing. She is my sub-adult clown het pied, and she doesn't have hides because uh, she stopped using them after a while. She would, uh, you know, every time I went into her enclosure, I would see her outside the tub. She'd be sort of wrapped around, I mean, outside the hide. She'd be kind of wrapped around it or whatever, but she wouldn't curl up in the hide. So I pulled them to give her more room to cruise around her enclosure. And then Kata also, my newest adult, Ivory GHI, doesn't have hides because she doesn't use them. And she's a big snake. I wanna give her as much room in her enclosure as possible. I ha just haven't introduced hides to her because she, she hasn't used them. Damara, who is actually bigger than Kata, I would love Damara to not have hides because I'd like her to have room in her enclosure too. But Damara just curls up in her hide and that's where she is all day. And if I pull one of her hides, then she stays in the other one uh, rather than thermoregulating. And we've talked about that, that snakes with two different hides will choose one hide over the other because they prefer security over thermoregulation. And for Damara, she needs that security and she doesn't care whether it's on the warm side or the cold side. So I have two cut buckets because you can't buy a snake hide big enough for her. <laughs> and she spins all of her time in, in those. When she's not in a hide, that means she's out of her enclosure exploring. Ken, do you have a Kent's Corner for us? No, but I'll go do one real quick. I am freezing out here. I don't know why it's so chilly today. Hi, welcome to Kent's Corner, where you always see me and two windows. Anyway, here's the deal with live streams. If I joined in on a live stream, that means that I have to stay at work longer. Also, Bob always has snakes out during live streams. It's like a python nightmare in there, and I don't want to die, thank you very much. But look, if you want to see me in a live stream, just comment below that you'd like to see me. And if you don't want to see me in a live stream, don't comment. And then at the end of this, we'll count up all the comments versus not comments and see who wins. Thank you for watching Kent's Corner, the best thing you've ever watched. Kent, I feel like comments versus not comments is not a measurable test. I think we'll just say that you will make an appearance in an upcoming live stream. Dang it. In the live stream, I was confused in the moment as to uh, Dolly's genetics versus Tiger Lily's genetics. And I want to clear that up, but I also really just wanted to show them again because I think it's so interesting how different they look. And I believe it's the difference of two genes. So Dolly, let me make sure I get this right. Calico, asphalt, spot nose, extreme gene. That's what I believe she is. Tiger Lily is all those, calico, spot nose, asphalt, extreme gene, plus inchy, plus orange dream. That's what I believe. You know, when you're getting into four, five, six gene animals, especially if you haven't produced them before, it's tough to tell sometimes. Alexandria asks, will you name my banana pastel? He's a male. Yes, I will. I'm gonna give you three choices. We'll say Daryl from accounting. I like when snakes have normal names and I also like when they have titles. Uh, so Daryl from accounting, the real slim Shetty, 
I, I don't think I recommend that one, actually. <laughs> it's, it's still going to be one of the three. You've got that as an option, but it's not recommended. The Real Slim Shetty. Uh, <laughs> it's so dumb, you guys. Let's say, you know what? I, I'm really happy with the name Bear for my little pied het clown. I think that's cool to name your snake the name of another animal. And I almost made, I almost named Bear Goat because I think Goat is a cool name. Uh, and it also means greatest of all time. You might be able to come up with a better name than I did. So keep me posted. When I pick up my ball python's hide, she just kind of melts. Like she spreads out immediately. And then I have, and then I have to pick her up and put the hide to put the hide back, right? You gotta pick her up to put the hide back. What does that mean? That means my walls are gone. I wanna be touching walls. I need walls to touch. It means that you took the walls away and ball pythons feel really secure when they're touching four sides of something. So this is kind of the opposite reaction of balling up, right? This is pretty common with, with snakes when they, when the hide is lifted, they go and spread out because they wanna be feeling something. <laughs> It's a bit of a fear response, but it's not, um, they're not terrified. They're just, they're just going, hey, where's my walls? You guys, the sun's coming out. That's the thing about shooting outside. The lighting changes. Buying from you, the babies you sell are on frozen thawed. Uh, yeah, I've sold a few this year. All of my babies start out on frozen thawed. And, sh and basically she's further asking that uh, a new owner would then start them off on frozen thawed. So yes, that's the case. And the reason, the reason that's being brought up is we were talking about the fact that most larger breeders, because they kind of have to uh, feed live. And I was talking about in the, in the live stream switching from, you know, giving them their first meal of exactly what they're used to having which is a, a live mouse or rat if I, if I buy from a, from a larger breeder and then switching them shortly after that as soon as I can to frozen thawed. But the snakes that, that I hatched out this year are all on, on frozen thawed, except for the one that I'm, that I'm still trying to get to take their first meal and I'm assist feeding. I'm offering that one frozen thawed live, whatever, just to try to get her to eat. Hey guys, future future Bob here with a quick, very exciting update. The little girl that I was assist feeding finally took a meal on her own last night right before this upload. So she is almost exactly three months old. She's had six assist fed meals and finally figured out how to eat on her own. Alexandria asks, cubed what? And what we're talking about here is focus cubed habitats. I was mentioning that I'm replacing the Exoterra top on the bioactive vivarium for the inspector. And he's getting a, a custom made PVC top. Just go to focuscubedhabitats.com. They make some really cool enclosures. They kind of specialize in arboreal snakes like green tree pythons and stuff, but they also have some terrestrial setups, but really cool customizable enclosures. But they also do these custom PVC replaceable tops for Exoterra. And I'm getting one next week, I think. Jordan's asking, I have a bioactive enclosure for my false water cobra. Super cool that you have a false water cobra. Those are awesome. Uh, it has fungus gnats. Will they harm my snake and spread pa possible pathogens? And I was wondering about beneficial nematodes, if they would harm my snake. Uh, the fungus gnats, no. I get those too in the bioactive. I think that's pretty common. I think everybody deals with those in the bioactive. I just get rid of them because they're annoying, but I'm not worried about them passing pathogens. There's nothing you can do about nematodes. Most nematodes that are around are beneficial, although there are tons of varieties of nematodes that are parasitic also. You will see them whether you add them to your enclosure or not, you will have them. Nematodes are the most plentiful animal I don't know if animal is the right word. Organism, it's the most plentiful, what do you call it? Animal, bug, whatever. You guys, I'm not Clint, come on. Don't expect me to say words right. They're the most plentiful animal on earth. And they say that if you looked at a picture of the earth with everything taken out of the earth, except nematodes, there would be a perfect outline in nematodes of all the land and all the mountains and everything of earth. And you'll have them in your bioactive. And that's cool. Natalia asks, will you play something with Lucy? This is because my ukulele student, Lucy, showed up at the end of the live stream. She takes care of my snakes when I'm out of town. She's a very talented uh, ukulele player and singer and really good with my snakes. And yes, but not this week because she's out of town right now. Actually, you know what, the, you know what this would be is a good Patreon video to do. Lucy and I playing something. In fact, speaking of that, let's do the mid video Patreon credit scroll right here. Thanks to these Patreon supporters. I really appreciate them. I think maybe what we'll do is a little Patreon video of Lucy on ukulele 
I'll have her sing too because she's really good at singing. Maybe I'll be on mandolin or something. And we'll uh, we'll do a song. And, and we'll also do it in a live stream, I think. She, she doesn't always show up. It just kind of depends on whether she has a lesson scheduled right at the end of, the, of when I'm doing the live stream. Thanks so much to my Patreon supporters who are making it possible for me to crank out these videos consistently. Now remember, this was a Snakes and Scotch live stream. Lane says, I love Oogadol. It only comes out on special occasions though. It's so good. The Ardbeg Oogadol is good stuff. Moniz asks, how cool would it be if one day you could make your own brand of scotch? It would be very cool. Thanks for watching, you guys. See you next week. Mom, you said I don't need a coat today, but I do need a coat. Can you bring me one?